Through the ages, man has sought to distinguish his castle, his clan, or his country by means of a crest, generally a flag, claimed to the world his ideal, a symbol of his patriotism. The flag of the United States and mine is symbolic of a living country and the government of, by, and for the people. The history of our still young and growing nation is written in every star and fold of our great flag. The great blessing of our birthright is that in this troubled world, there is still a bright spot where borders never change, where peace reigns supreme. The United States of America has become a nation second to none in wealth and influence, in greatness and in power. Our founding fathers sought words to describe the future nation and the flag which typifies it. In the famous preamble to the Constitution, the words, we the people, signify the chain of unity which now wells our vast empire of 48 separate states. King James VI united these two early English flags, the Cross of St. Andrew and the Cross of St. George, into one emblem. This new flag became the famous Union Jack, or King's Colors, onto which were made the first settlements in the New World during the reign of James VI. There were many other forerunners of the Stars and Stripes. First, the Union Jack, or King's Color. Then the Meteor. The Taunton flag was the Meteor flag bearing the word Liberty. The Bedford flag used at Concord on April 19, 1775. This is the Moultrie flag, a crescent in a blue field bearing the word Liberty. The Bunker Hill flag, one of the pine tree flags. The pine tree flag used by the Continental Navy. The famous rattlesnake flag with the warning, don't tread on me. The Rhode Island flag, the earliest use of 13 stars in a blue field. And the Cambridge or Grand Union flag. The alternate stripes indicated a dissension from the King's rule. But the Union Jack also indicated a feeling of loyalty to the mother country. A definite break had not yet been made. When General Washington heard that the Declaration of Independence had been signed, he ordered the Grand Union flag flown for this occasion. Congress adopts the Stars and Stripes. The facsimile of the original resolution passed by the Continental Congress June 14, 1777, adopting the flag of the United States. This resolution was proposed by John Adams, later a president of the United States. A significant part of this resolution is the words, 13 stars white in a blue field representing a new constellation. It is in these words that we find the very soul and spirit of the American flag. This resolution of adoption did not prescribe how the stars were to be arranged. As a result, in the beginning, they were arranged in a circle to symbolize the hope that the Union would be without end. The Stars and Stripes was the flag of the states which was carried through the battles of the Revolution and which inspired our soldiers in their long fight for freedom. The surrender of Cornwallis at Yorktown, this marked the beginning of the United States as a free nation. The Stars and Stripes had won its first significant victory. It could now take its place among the flags of the world. In 1791 and 92, Vermont and Kentucky were admitted to the Union. The representatives of these two states wanted recognition in the flag. So on January 13, 1794, Congress enacted a law giving the, us the flag with 15 stars and 15 stripes. This was the flag of the United States for more than 20 years until 1818. 1803, the Louisiana Purchase marked the start of our nation's westward growth beyond the Mississippi. Nearly a million square miles purchased from France for $15 million or four cents an acre. This territory later added 13 stars to the flag. 1818, the Union had increased to 20 states. Ohio, Indiana, Tennessee, Mississippi, and Louisiana were given recognition in an act passed by Congress. This act returned the number of stripes to the original 13 and decreed that thereafter a star should be added to the blue field for each new state admitted. The essence of the act was, every star a state, every state 
a star. As early as 1832, the idea of a railroad line spanning the nation was conceived. At that time, there were only 140 miles of track in the entire country. Building westward. 1849, the discovery of gold in California. This exciting news spread rapidly and soon started vast caravans of pioneers westward to wealth and adventure. These were truly the empire builder. Congress had approved the plan for a railroad line from Omaha to San Francisco. The construction of this line was marked with many hardships. The Indians quickly realized that the railroad was a pathway by which land-hungry settlers would soon be arriving. It would end their happy hunting ground. They attacked the construction crews at various points along the line. Naturally, it became necessary for organized force to maintain constant vigilance, to stop these attacks and protect the crews so that the work might progress in an orderly fashion. At long last, these empire builders had made it possible to cross the country by rail. The continent was linked from coast to coast. The westward sweep of empire carried with it a wave of new states, more stars for the flag. By 1912, our nation consisted of 46 states. Then, Arizona and New Mexico added their two stars to give us our present 48 states. The parade of the states and stars was now complete. On May 30th, 1916, President Wilson established June 14th of each year as Flag Day, the culmination of more than a quarter of a century of effort to engender interest in the observance of Flag Day. A hundred and fifty years of progress. The of stars representing states which started east of the Mississippi has been joined by a galaxy of stars in the west forming a complete constellation whose brilliance is reflected around the entire world. And today, from 13 struggling colonies, the Twin Islands on the east and the Panama Canal Zone on the south, to Alaska on the north, and westward across the Pacific to the Philippines. Friendly relations exist with the Dominion of Canada, still under the Union Jack of England. Nowhere else in the world is there 3,000 miles of border, which needs no fortifications or soldiers to guard it. It is necessary only as a matter of precaution for us to maintain a powerful navy, army, and air force for the protection of our people and the pride on the sea. The eyes of the world are on the United States of America today. We, as a nation, must exhibit to the world the proud fact that a government founded on the priceless liberties guaranteed by our Constitution, which came into being more than 150 years ago, is still a splendid example for all other nations to follow. of the United States of America.